around New Jersey, around the clock. This is News 12 New Jersey. News 12 New Jersey's Ranji Sinha is in Trenton, where this situation continues to unfold at a very slow pace. Good evening, Ranji. Well, good evening, Rick. This is going into its 29th hour, a very tense situation here in South Trenton. Now, all eyes are on a brick building here along Grand Street. We're going to try to zoom in and show it to you. It's the brick building beyond the police vehicles with two awnings jutting out. Now, a man is holed up inside that building after killing two people, a mother and her teenage son, and police are trying to get his hostages out alive. Now, this all began shortly before 3 p.m. Friday. While we've been out here, we spoke to family of one of the victims, and they ID'd the mother as 46-year-old Carmelita Stevenson. Now, our understanding is that relatives of Stevenson called police, asking them to check on her after they weren't hearing from her. Officers came to the apartment and were confronted by Stevenson's boyfriend, who had a gun and the hostages. Again, he had killed Stevenson, her teenage son, and has three hostages, two women ages 18 and 20, and a three-year-old boy. The great concern for authorities is that he will harm those people if they move in, so they are playing it very safe. The prosecutor's office gave a short briefing before 7 to address rumors that the subject had been shot. Here's what they said. That is untrue. Additionally, um, there's been several questions raised about where the residents from that area are staying. We can confirm that the Trenton Police Department, uh, along with the city business administrator, made sure that the several residents in the immediate zone of danger were evacuated. We are in constant contact with the suspect and everything is moving toward in our hope for a peaceful resolution to this matter. Now authorities have been dealing with this situation for a very long time, staying overnight Friday deep into the day Saturday with many officials, including SWAT, on the scene. Now, police have closed off numerous streets in the area, and they're trying to keep children away. Of course, Rick, we are going to stay here in South Trenton and bring you all the latest developments right here on News 12 New Jersey. For now, let's throw it back to you on the desk. It's going to be incredibly tense for those family members as they hope for a, a peaceful outcome to the rest of this situation. From Trenton, Ranji, these tend to vary in lengths, but this one is now becoming uh, quite long. Well, Rick, we're going on 30 plus hours of a very tense situation here in South Trenton. People wondering if this is going to be resolved. It's all taking place about two blocks from where I'm standing. We're going to try to zoom in and show you the situation beyond the police vehicles, a brick building and a man is holed up inside after killing a mother and her teenage son and then taking hostages. Running over the details again, this began around 3 p.m. Friday. Family have cycled through this area all day and told us the woman who was killed is 46-year-old Carmelita Stevenson. Relatives asked police to do a wellness check on Stevenson when they couldn't get in touch with her. Police came, found her dead, and were confronted by Stevenson's boyfriend who had a gun and had taken people hostage. Two women, ages 18 and 20, and a three-year-old boy. So they're playing it extra safe, the authorities and briefings from them have come few and far between, but during one that was held just before 7 p.m. in the evening Saturday, a spokesperson with Mercer County Prosecutor's Office addressed the rumors that the suspect had been shot. That is untrue. Additionally, um, there's been several questions raised about where the residents from that area are staying. We can confirm that the Trenton Police Department, uh, along with the city business administrator, made sure that the several residents in the immediate zone of danger were evacuated. We are in constant contact with the suspect and everything is moving toward in our hope for a peaceful resolution to this matter. Now there have been some very tense moments for Stevenson's family here. They're frustrated with the pace of things and have confronted police several times. They want this resolved, much like everyone in this area. They so far have not gone on camera with any media, but one family member I've talked to drove up from the D.C. area as all this played out. Now they've been here for 30 plus hours, and some of them are actually heading home to Maryland.
Now, numerous roads in this area are blocked off around Grand Street, so this area of South Trenton, probably one that people want to avoid for the foreseeable future as this standoff continues. Now, the Mercer County Prosecutor's Office and the New Jersey State Police did come out a short while ago and said there are going to be no more briefings this evening, but obviously, if we get any more developments, we'll bring it to you right here on News 12 New Jersey. For now, Rick, let's throw back to you in the studio. Yeah, authorities really buckling down for a tense situation there, very delicate as well. All right, Ranji, thanks so much. Let's check in with News 12 New Jersey's Nadia Rondas, who's at Sandy Hook Beach. And Nadia, the hood is up. That wind is really kicking in. You know, if I could, I would have stayed home too. But you know what? I had to work. Well, let me tell you, it was just yesterday. The shore was packed with people getting their first taste of spring. And now we're dealing with winter all over again. And it just doesn't seem fair. Now, let me describe the conditions out here. It's downright ugly. It's foggy. There's a light rain and the wind is blowing blustery so much. So I don't know if you can see it is very difficult for me to stand in one spot. In the meantime, I'm going to walk aside. Take a look. We are here at what is now an abandoned Sandy Hook Beach. Now check out the water. It's choppy. There's high seas and strong rip currents that are both menacing and intimidating. As a matter of fact, we have not seen any surface since we've been out here. I'm going to guess that the conditions are a little too much for them. However, earlier today, there were some who braved the elements and tried to take part in the water conditions, but uh, but they fell miserably. Now, this kite surfer was apparently no match for the high seas today. The kite surfer was rescued from the rough water in the Sandy Hook Bay. Now, it appears the surfer made it out okay, but what we're hearing is so we're still waiting for official word on his condition. Meantime, there were a few who decided to brave the elements early today. A man who had to walk his dog and two roommates who wanted to take pictures of the violent waves. It is a you know, beautiful day, not like yesterday, but uh, come out, take some pictures, enjoy the day out regardless. Susie, uh, not a happy dog today, not a happy camper. No, nope, she doesn't like the wind so much. <laughs> <laughs> it was 85 yesterday, and this is quite a shift. So Mother Nature has been good to us. Yeah. <laughs> it's a rough winter. Well, we are just a day away, of course, to welcoming in 2017. Can't come soon enough. An estimated 1 million people will travel to Times Square to watch the ball drop, right? And that means extra security, not just in New York City, but here in New Jersey as well. Yeah, News 12 New Jersey's Jim Murdoch is at Port Imperial in Weehawken, where hundreds are expected to take the ferry into the city for the celebrations. Jim? Good morning, guys. You know, no place in the world throws a party like New Year's Eve in Times Square. And many of us will be heading over there early tomorrow to hit the uh, secured zones and get a prime spot. That real estate and that pen over there to watch the, uh, the ball drop and ring in 2017. Now we are at the New York Waterways Port Imperial Terminal Ferry. Some of the best views of Manhattan found right here along the Jersey side of the Hudson River. And before you head over, just a heads up now about certain security measures and travel plans. Take a look at Times Square right there underneath the H&M building. Wow, can't wait for tomorrow night. Now, first, it is strongly encouraged you leave your car at home and take mass transit over to the city. NJ Transit Path and the ferry provide easy access to Manhattan. Festivities start early in the evening in Times Square, so it goes without saying. If you want the best spot, leave early and arrive even before noon. Now, with all that being said, come tomorrow night, Times Square will be likely one of the most safest and secure areas in the entire world. Leave early, be sure to bundle up, and most importantly, have fun, take lots of pictures, and remember to charge your cell phones because in this cold weather, they die in a hurry. <laughs> we are live at the beautiful views here along Hudson River. Port Authority, uh, the uh, not Port Authority, the uh, Port Imperial Ferry Service. It opens up in just a little bit, and we might be on a boat in a little bit too. I'm Jim Murdoch, News 12, New Jersey. Remember your cell phone chargers. Yes, keep those memories alive. Justin, thank you. We've been talking a lot about security, both in New York and here in New Jersey, as final preparations are being made for the big New Year's Eve celebration. News 12 New Jersey's Jim Murdoch has made his way from Port Imperial in Weehawken over to Manhattan with an update on what's expected for that big celebration, Jim. Well, good morning. Yeah, so we've been uh, describing the ferry all morning long, and this is where it lets you out right here on the Midtown Manhattan side now. If you take the ferry tomorrow, you can catch one of the free shuttle buses 
that the ferry service provides to your destination. Now, where we are here in Manhattan, we're right at 39th and 12th. And what you want to do, it's about a 10 minute walk to Times Square. You can walk up four blocks up to 42nd, or three blocks to 42nd Street, and then walk over four blocks. You want to be on 42nd and 7th for Times Square, or there's a plenty of taxis that'll take you where you have to go. Again, 10 minute walk, free shuttle, taxi. What you don't want to do is bring your vehicle over here to Manhattan, especially tomorrow. Let's talk about security for a second. You don't want to bring backpacks, umbrellas, or open containers of alcohol. Those are all permitted inside the secured areas over in Times Square. Now, you were mentioning about taking mass transit. Again, leave your vehicle at home. Earlier, I caught up with Jennifer Shuck from the New York Waterways, and she describes why it's so important to leave your car at home. Watch. The only way to get to uh, New York City at any time is to take mass transit. I mean, it's the perfect way, especially the ferry. We have our free shuttle buses to utilize. So I recommend taking it. You want to avoid the traffic. It's stress free. It's eight minutes across the river. You can't beat it. We've also been talking about NJ Transit throughout the morning as well. They will have extra routes available in and out of New York City. A lot of the routes are also running on weekend schedules. We have that on our website, news12.com. So pretty much go to our website for all the information you need if you want to take part in the biggest celebration in the world, Times Square, right here in Manhattan tomorrow night. We're live in Manhattan. I'm Jim Murdoch, News 12, New Jersey. You don't have to be in Indianapolis to have plenty of Super Bowl Sunday fun. News 12 New Jersey's Sean Bergen is at Miami Mike Sports Bar in East Hanover, checking out all the action, made some new friends too. Sean. Well, I'll tell you, Rick, we are in full-on football heaven here at Miami Mike's in East Hanover, and the ringleader of this circus is none other than Miami Mike Minervini himself. Mike, what's going on here today? It's mayhem today for Giants Super Bowl party. Our tailgate party's going strong. It's going nuts today at Miami Mike's Giants, baby, all day, all night. Short race from Flanders. How do you see this game going, buddy? And the Giants can do it as long as they get to the front, the front four, pressure Brady and knock him down. Bring out the smelling swords. Giants will win 27-24. Great, Bob. Which thing you say it's all in the offense? Okay, it's, it's going to be 24-14. Giants. They cannot defend against the three pass receivers. Listen, I can't make out heads or tails of what any of these guys are saying. All I can tell you is this. These guys are stoked. They are fired up. That's the only way to describe it. That's the latest from Miami Mike's in East Hanover. Back to you, Rick. Sean, the rest of New Jersey hears you. We got a Giants victory parade ready to go. Thanks so much. Around New Jersey, around the clock, this is News 12 New Jersey. Hi everyone, I'm Rick Holmes. Well, the Giants battled it out up until the final minutes of Super Bowl 46 and took home the win and the Vince Lombardi Trophy 21 to 17. We're going to go live to Indianapolis for all the postgame reaction. But first, we're going to head out to Sean Bergen, who is in East Hanover tonight at Miami Mike's. Set the scene for us there, Sean. I don't think you have to. Are you kidding me? This is flat out football pandemonium, Rick. I can barely get through to my own camera here. They're going absolutely bonkers here at Miami Mike's in East Hanover. Mike, you've been leading the charge the whole time. What are you making it? Uh, it's mayhem. This is what we live for. This is why I'm here for these fans. We did it today. It's mayhem. All right, I hope you can still see me there. I got Steve Freeland over here. You've been uh, leading the charge back here all night. What do you make of this? Um, it's unbelievable. To be a giant, you got to have a lot of heart. To be a Giants fan, you got to have a lot of tums, let me tell you. And I hope you guys back there in Edison heard all that because I can barely hear it here my suit. I don't know what else to say. Keep on fighting! Yes, Sean. I never heard Sean. I never heard Sean's voice so high. Keep it right there. Listen to that. Yeah, I think they were about to carry me out of my shoulder. <laughs> around New Jersey, around the clock. This is News 12 New Jersey.